Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who's been sweating like Kevin Feige after I saw this brand new Batman trailer. It's filled with easter eggs, hidden details and a lot of callbacks to the comics that we're going to be breaking down in this video. Full spoilers ahead, so if you don't want anything potentially ruined, then I recommend that you check out now. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to smash the subscribe one like it's Jason Todd's head. With that out of the way, bit of a Dark Knight joke there. Now let's get into the Batman trailer. Okay, so the last time we had a proper look at the film was during the first DC fandom over a year ago. It's been a long Halloween waiting until this October, but we now have one of the most conclusive looks at the film that we'll get before it releases in March. When the initial panel dropped, Matt Reeves confirmed that he'd only filmed 25% of the movie at the time, but it's now fully wrapped and we know a lot of things about the film. According to leaks from the screening, this will be an almost 3 hour epic that is somewhat of a detective noir film. Batman will narrate major parts of the movie, and this is of course a nod to not only the genre, but also how the characters comics are in general. The Dark Knight Returns especially is filled with inner monologues, and it's nice that they've managed to bring these two things together. Batman will also wrestle with killing, and according to leaks on the movie, he will come close to it, but not actually do it. What we know for definite though is that this is a very brutal Batman, who will use pipes and any weapons he can find to kick the crap out of criminals. Hopefully he pays for their hospital bills too, as yes, some of this combat it is pretty bad. Now one of the big things to take from the trailer is that we hear his voice, and it sounds slightly modulated, but not to the point that it's completely distorted. I really like this rendition, and for me it's up there with what I imagine Batman to sound like when I read Batman Year One. Now the trailer itself was worth sitting through 3 hours of Fleur Borg Stand Up 4. We open in a diner, and this seems like it was pulled from the beginning of Arkham Knight. What we catch is the police arresting Edward Nashton, who leaves behind his signature riddle mark in a cappuccino. Later on, we see Batman questioning him as he's imprisoned, and there's a lot of Silence of the Lambs vibes from this. On his shirt, you might also notice that it says hospital, so it's possible that he was taken to Arkham, which in this universe is a psychiatric institute. Clearly Riddler has set things up around the city, and is very much terrorising it with his insignia. I actually think this coffee might be somewhat of a clue, and that it could hold reference in a future riddle with either the location or something dropped here being of some importance. He's taken in by Gordon and his men, which is when we cut to the Warner Brothers logo and also watch the bat signal being lit up. These moments are all very important as they show that Batman is actually working with the police. I believe that there will be a strained relationship with them because we know from the first trailer that Bruce has to escape somewhere as the police fire upon him and it could be that the Riddler frames Batman for something. It also looks like they chase him off Gotham Tower whilst he wears a wingsuit. This is such an amazing scene and it showcases how Gotham is really Batman's playground. Now according to other leaks from the screening that were dropped on Twitter, the Riddler will be very much a jigsaw type figure that puts people in impossible traps that ultimately lead to their deaths. This was seen in the first trailer with the explosive collar on the DA, and this was actually based on the real life one that was used in a robbery. If you want to know more about this, then I definitely recommend that you check out the Netflix documentary Evil Genius, as it's a very harrowing tale that they're clearly pulling from. Now just in the same way that Batman is a symbol for the city, Riddler is very much seen in the same vein, and we catch some footage of him which says that he's live streaming. It also seems like he's gained a lot of followers who are of course sick of the corruption in Gotham. Now cutting back to the bat signal, and Bruce very much remarks on it, and how it's not just a call, it's also a warning. All criminals should be terrified to be out there, and thus they've resorted to hiding amongst gangs, which we catch in the next shot. Now this is actually the Penguins gang, which we can tell due to their black and white face paint. They attempt to beat Batman, but he completely outmatches them, and we see a moment from the first trailer in which he was shot. This kind of shows just how bulletproof the armor is, and later on we see that it's capable of deflecting machine gun ammo. Bruce says in The Dark Knight Returns that he wears an emblem on the chest because people would aim for that instead of his face. We definitely get that idea in these two shots, as that's exactly what the criminals go for. It works well as the second shot misses, and allows Bruce to use a deafening electronic device that might be based upon sonar technology, which is of course similar to a submarine. Now Batman goes to visit Riddler, and we see that he's causing terror within the city. Matt Reeves said that during the costume test that he put black eye makeup on, and whenever we've seen this in a film before, when Bruce has taken the mask off, there's been nothing underneath it. I'm glad they finally acknowledged it, as it's such a cool bit of character design, and shows sort of just how unhinged that he is. 
Now as for the major plot of the film, according to the leaks on it, the movie will pull from books like The Long Halloween, Batman Earth 1 and some of the more grounded year 2 stories. I actually have a big theory that this story is also going to bring a lot of elements of Dark Victory in as well and in case you don't know, it's actually the direct sequel to Long Halloween. The Long Halloween involved a killer called Holiday who murdered members of the Mafia on holidays throughout the year. Dark Victory was somewhat a flip on that as it had a new serial killer emerging in Gotham who struck policemen and high ranking officials. Judging by what the Riddler is doing, he's attacking people like the Mayor, the Commissioner, DA and so on in order to bring an end to the corruption in Gotham. Now beyond this, the cover of Dark Victory is very similar aesthetically to the recently released posters. They all dropped through the week and showed images of Batman against a striking red background. The image of the Riddler also feels somewhat similar to the covers that are in the book and it all ties together pretty neatly in my opinion. Now in addition to this, Matt Reeves put out a tweet yesterday when promoting the posters that said, what's black and blue and dead all over? This could be Nightwing, however it could also be a reference to the police force being taken out by the Riddler. In the trailer, the Riddler does say that he means Batman, but I think this might be cropped from another moment in the movie or it could just be him referring to how Batman is the law. I actually think that he's going to be saying this to Savage during one of his many murders and Savage is actually the commissioner in this movie. Obviously, let me know your thoughts below, but that just makes a lot of sense to me. Now in the book it's revealed that it's actually Falcone's daughter Sophia who is behind the killing. This somewhat juxtaposes the reveal in Long Halloween in which is his son Alberto who's carrying out the crimes. In the movie we know that Selena will be his daughter and though I don't think she's a serial killer, it all kind of ties everything together. The Long Halloween also has a side tangent called When in Rome which features Catwoman looking for her father and it turns out to be Falcone so yeah, it's all connected. Now according, sorry it's really late, now according to leaks and well just the way the trailer looks in general, Bruce will actually be in his Batman persona most of the time and he won't actually care about appearing normal. This is his mission and he'll stop at nothing to make sure that it's carried out. This also goes back to the comics as it was in both Earth 1 and 0 year that he didn't really put focus on his Bruce Wayne persona. However, come the close of the books, Alfred convinced him that it would be useful as it would allow him to infiltrate the upper elite circles of Gotham and that seems to make a lot of sense from what we see here. Now at this point we catch Batman looking over the Gotham skyline just as the sun is setting. It's rare that we see Batman actually out in the day and I feel this moment is the character watching the sun go down which will allow him to be able to hunt in the shadows. There's an almost vampiric feel to it and the gothic structure of the city definitely lends itself to that notion. I love the way that the golden sun illuminates the buildings and it feels very much like his hunting grounds. Now Reeves has said that he's taken elements of the Glasgow skyline and then used CGI to bring it closer to what he envisions Gotham as. Glasgow is a lovely city filled with lots of architecture that gives it an atmosphere and I think this design is all spot on. We also got an early look at Selina Kyle and rather than going the sort of street hustler route with her that was prevalent in year one, you can see how they've leaned into the Falcone daughter aesthetic to make a sleek stunning thief that will steal your heart and mine. Just don't tell the wife. Now I love seeing these moments in action now and it just adds so much to the aesthetic. Now Catwoman has two looks in the trailer, namely her short hair one and also one where she wears wigs. This very much speaks to how she has two sides to her personality, which is of course a comment on her character. We see somewhat of the relationship between Selina and Bruce as there's a lot of passion but also a lot of fighting. It's clear they've really worked on the chemistry between the pair and I just buy them as a couple and really want to ship them. Is that what kids say? I don't know, I'm 33. Now we also get a look at Penguin in which he stares over the city and at that moment it currently belongs to him and his criminal empire. We catch Andy Serkis as Alfred and it's a much gruffer version than what we've ever seen before. This seems like it's pulling from Earth 1 due to the costume design and he actually helped to train Bruce after accepting that he was fully committed to his mission. He also had a prosthetic leg so it'll be interesting to see if that's brought across as it kind of hints to the character's past and what he went through on his many combat missions. Now in the trailer he has a scar on his eye and I'm guessing that this is just a very subtle nod to his past. He says that if this continues it won't be long until Bruce has nothing left 
and this is very much the stance that he took in the comics. Alfred is of course somewhat of a father to Bruce and he cares about him a lot so it makes sense why he wouldn't want him doing this. Now we cut to a skyward shot of Bruce mapping out the clues that have been left by the Riddler and this includes the sins of my father, no more lies, Coulson, Savage, Mitchell and Renewal is a lie. Colton is the film's DA and as we've said Savage is its commissioner so I'm guessing that these are victims of the Riddler. Gordon is a lieutenant in this film and the commissioner being killed will leave room for him to take his place. The other clues, especially the father one, relates to Bruce and I believe that the renewal is a lie comment is talking about the industrial side of Gotham going through renovation. Potentially this is simply to line the pockets of the elite and thus the Riddler is trying to destroy the corruption that the Waynes may have been a part of. Cut to what I believe is the Iceberg Lounge aka the Penguins Club. Here he comes face to face with the villain who doesn't seem that shook by him. It's completely brutal and we have heard that there are fights at the Iceberg Lounge so this moment lines up a lot with the leaks. Batman uses pipes and anything at his disposal to go toe to toe with people and it's such a brutal brutal moment. Now we catch another one of Catwoman's wigs and she goes in disguise before remarking on Bruce's mask. This shows the similarities between the two and she says maybe they're not so different which is a line normally uttered by villains cementing the complexity of her character. Catch Batman not even needing to move faster than a speeding bullet and more of the Batmobile chase from the first trailer. Now we know that Catwoman is going to be riding on a motorbike and the Penguin will probably be chasing after her which Batman will also be pursuing. I'm kind of guessing that she sneaks into his club, steals something and then he goes after her which makes Batman follow right behind them. We also catch a very muddy and beaten up looking Batman and I believe this happens either at the end of the film or immediately after the explosion at the mayor's funeral. This would explain the damage on his bat suit and also why he looks like he's had better days than us sitting for 3 hours and then hearing Linda Carter talking about a song she wrote. Go on Linda, give us a song yeah? Do a rap. Go on, do a rap. Now finally we close out with a car chase which I think will follow on immediately from the club scene. We know that Penguin is being played by Colin Farrell and he said that he has a rather short part in the movie so I'm guessing that this will last about one scene. I'd love to see him pop up throughout the films like Scarecrow did in the Dark Knight trilogy and I think that would be the best way to use the character. He thinks he's got Batman but like a phoenix from the flames he comes crashing through in what looks like imagery ripped right out of Arkham Knight. Batman struts towards the overturned car looking like death himself and thus it ends this absolutely incredible trailer. Now before we go into my reaction I just want to kind of clear something up as I know a lot of you wanted me to cover the full DC fandom event. I tried doing that last year and in the end just resorted to doing cam reactions the entire day and though it did okay I kind of felt like I could have put more effort into the videos but there was just so much to cover. So for this year I wound up doing the two and in the end just decided last minute I'd rather put out the best video I can than try and cover five different things and for the videos to all be terrible which let's be honest they would have been. Now I have been watching the panels and I'm really excited for the future but yeah I just thought I'd give you a reason why my upload feed is looking deader than Bruce Wayne's parents. That being said it's also pretty late in the UK so I do kind of want to circle back around to this trailer and do an even more in-depth breakdown later in the week. Now as for my thoughts on it I was absolutely blown away by this new look and again I feel like this is going to be an incredible film that shows us what DC can do best. We really don't need this studio trying to be Marvel and they actually have the freedom to explore things that Marvel can't because of the audiences that they aim for. Reeves has clearly been given free reign here and this brand new look is absolutely amazing. The whole tone of it makes it feel more like Seven or Silence of the Lambs instead of a comic book movie and I had goosebumps whilst watching it which is definitely saying something. Everything just seems part of this gritty and grounded world and I think next year that it's really going to make an impact and remind us that when DC want to they have the skills to completely knock it out of the park. I'm excited as a bat out of hell and I feel like this trailer is going to be something I'll watch again and again and again 500 times in the next 10 minutes. Not going to sleep tonight. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the trailer so make sure you comment below and let me know. As I said we're going to be doing another breakdown later in the week so make sure you drop some of the easter eggs that we missed below. We are running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the phase 3 MCU box set on the 30th of October and all you have to do to be in with the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the teaser. 
We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers if that's you. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of Halloween Kills which will be linked on screen right now. The horror is uh, it's it's got a lot of stuff to talk about and obviously I'd love to go through that with you so make sure you head over there right after this. If not then thank you for sticking through the video, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and you take care of yourself. Stay indoors, the Batman is about and I'll see you on Monday. Peace.